Ever try and turn some material that no matter what you do just can't get a good finish on like this cold rolled here? First we're going to start at 440 RPM with approximately 9 thousandths a revolution feed rate, 25 thousandths depth of cut. So we look at that and go, you just stop that here and zoom in. You can you can practically taste how bad this is. Let's see if I can get the focus. Okay, so there's the finish. Let's just zoom uh, too close. So you can feel how bad this finish is. So you say, all right, but you're taking such a fast uh, feed rate, a heavy feed rate. So let's switch over to two thousandths of revolution. Do the exact same thing and take a 25 thousandths depth of cut. Still looks like crapola, but it's taking longer to look like crapola, so that's a plus. Um, throwing some lube in there doesn't really change anything. Not significantly. And uh, greater depth of cut, like 50 thousandths, slow feed rate, still not fixing the problem. So the question is when you're trying to get a decent finish on a hard to work material like this cold rolled, what do you do? And my god, that's terrible. You can just feel your fingernails. Um, there is something called a vertical shear bit, and there are several people on YouTube that have excellent videos explaining how to grind and make one. Um, among them is Tubal Cane, uh, Mr. Pete 222 or something like that. Do a search for Tubal Cane, you'll find him. And uh, he has a huge collection of videos where he explains a lot of things very well. There is a way to grind a vertical shear bit out of high speed steel. It's actually easier than drill than grinding a regular bit, but I have another idea in mind. If you've watched my videos in the past, you know I'm a big fan of carbide cutters, so I was looking at ways to make an indexable uh, vertical shear cutter, and I think I might have found one, so I'm going to make uh, try and convert this into a vertical shear cutter. So I didn't need the offset, but it was the uh, holder I found for a decent price, so I just bought it. Um, I looked for an insert that was the sharpest I could find, and if you look at that edge, that is uh, pretty reasonably sharp, because that's important for a vertical shear bit. And this is a left-handed cutter uh, with a triangular insert, and you're looking at it going, well, how is that going to be a vertical shear bit? Well, if you just turn this guy on its side like this, and then tilt it back more than five degrees, according to sources of things I've read, um, I'm going to shoot for 15 degrees, but more than 5 up to 55 is uh, uh, the recommendations I have seen. Uh, the larger the angle, the uh, longer your edge will last is what I've also read. So making the cutter uh, work on its side like this, you wonder how am I going to do it? Well, I'm just going to remove some material all the way down. So this is a one inch cutter and when as I've shown in some of my other videos, when I have a one inch cutter and I don't want to use one of my XL tool holders, I want to hold it in the three quarter tool holder, all I do is put it in the mill and I take a little bit off the top and a little bit off the bottom, or if you want to be really careful, take it all off the bottom, and uh, you've got yourself a three quarter cutter. In this case, I'm going to take it off at an angle, sort of the way I've shown here. And I'm going to take it off at 15 degrees, leaving me about three quarter inch of cutter. and when I clamp this in the holder, it will now sit at a 15 degree angle relative to vertical. And let's see how that performs. So here's my setup. I have a grinding vise with that I used some uh, parallels to set up the uh, cutter in. Uh, I've, I've been careful to mark the end so I know how it's supposed to be oriented. Uh, I have some angle blocks that are held in place with magnets on the base of the vertex vise, and the vertex vise is clamped in the jaws of the Kurt vise. And I will be taking light cuts, 
Um, hardened jaws versus hardened uh, vice may not make it hold extremely tightly, so I'm going to I'm going to crank on it pretty good, but uh, uh, I don't want to take too big a bite because I don't want to make it slip. So I will uh, get ready to do some cuts and we'll be right back. So my goal here is just to remove enough material to reach the other side, which I actually don't have to do. I just have to have a big enough flat spot for the hold down screws to uh, mate with, but uh, I'm going to go all the way across. Um, I'm going to try uh, relatively slow RPM. We'll do like a thousand RPM. And how about we're just going to start taking edge off? How about uh, 50,000 step of cut initially? Face mill is not an ideal choice for this. I'm getting a lot of vibration. I'm taking a lot, a pretty big bite. Also, because I'm doing steel and probably possibly hardened steel, I chose round cutters, but they also take a lot of power, which means the uh, cutting forces are high. So I'm going to switch over to a half inch end mill and see if that improves things a little bit. So here's the cutter. There's the parallelogram I've taken out of it. And you can see it still will work as a regular uh, cutter and uh, I can tighten it down and it'll hold in place. Um, I might need to, sh let's see, no actually those are flats both sides and they're parallel. Yes, I can tighten that in place and it's still good. Also now with the parallelogram I can put it and tighten it in place like this. Giving me my 15 degree angle which is what I set. Sorry about the shadows there. I want to make sure that's in there before I snug it. So you don't have to use an offset tool like I did here. I uh, used an offset because I found a deal on one, so I figured, what the heck, I'm not even sure this is going to work. Heck, I haven't tested it out yet. So uh, let's see now how it works in the real world. All right, you've got, we've got the vertical shear tool installed. It's leaning back at 15 degrees. Where you cut on this edge is unimportant, so you don't have to center it. If you dull one part of it, you can just change the height and use a different part because it's cutting along the edge, so it doesn't matter which part. You don't have to be centered like a normal tool. So this is cold rolled steel. It's quite a mess. I'm going to set it up, and let's come back and do a 2,000th depth of cut. So remember, this, uh, this cutter is only good for a couple thousandths depth of cut maximum and you'll see the wispy chips it makes it's only good for finishing passes but on something like cold rolled steel where you can't get a good finish any other way this is an excellent option and now we can do it with carbide maybe we always could but this is my uh, first attempt I added a little lube to it, so let me uh, pull this guy out of the way. And look at that finish. You can't hardly feel it. This is the kind of chip it makes right here. And actually these are kind of large, so that might have been a bit bigger bite than I should have taken. Because I... Uh, I hadn't calibrated its position, so let's try another 2,000th depth of cut. Throw some lube on there, see if we can even do better.
Oops, took you too far away there. That finish is wonderful. Better than anything I've ever been able to get. If you wanted to polish it up, you could take some really light sandpaper and you wouldn't have a lot of work to do. So, there you go, vertical shear cutter. Hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching.